Hello everyone, this is Aether Nightmare, and welcome back to Near Reincarnation. There is another event story today, so I'm going to attempt to get that done, and while I'm not sure if I have enough force for a main story, I will still be giving it a go. Now, a quick disclaimer is that my vo voice might be uh, kind of raspy for this part because I'm still recovering from getting my latest COVID booster and uh, as a result my chest is kind of tight and it's a little bit hard to speak. So let us head on over to the door, the door of events, and it should be, here we go, record, Garden of Paradise. Looks like it's going to be a water quest this time around. I believe this one, yeah, he gives us a broadsword, a water broadsword. I already have a good water broadsword, so uh, while I will be getting it for enhanced drops, again, what I'm really more focused on is these tablets, because these are the things that are really gonna advance me forward the most. At this stage in the game, for Sun and Moon, you really want to pick three characters and stick with them. Stick with them pretty much no matter what, so... Try and stick any four characters of different weapons that you can together. Like any max ascended four star characters that you have, now is really a time to be focusing on those because we can improve three star weapons, but we cannot improve three star characters. So any four star characters that you really have, that's why my party is kind of a mess. Unfortunately, this game is really not gracious with its... Um, pity or character drops at all so unfortunately it's uh really really difficult to get a good team so events like these where you can max a send a character this is a three star character unfortunately if there is a four star one you really got to dedicate yourself to that and even i who've been playing for a long time really only have maybe four or five of said characters but anyway let's oh, nope not that i'm so used to doing that quest number one need wind affinity weapons. I'm not unfortunately super well equipped for wind affinity. I do have a couple. Like I have a staff for him. But aside from anything else, uh, not many other characters that I have have uh, wind affinity weapons that I've been able to max ascend. That is something I've been working on. I want one weapon element per one of these characters. But getting that uh, element has been difficult since I normally have to get it from these events. I have a couple that are close, but like I said, even substitute three star weapons to get a good element at this point in the game, but it's hard. <laughs> it's hard getting a good match. I doubt I have any for her. I have a fire weapon. I need to actually sort these, sorry. I have a fire weapon. I have a light weapon. And I have a water weapon for A2, but I do not have a wind weapon as of yet. There's a few I could work on, but I don't have enough materials to actually ascend them. Same with uh, Gale. I have a darkness weapon, I have a fire weapon, and I have a light weapon. But I do not have a wind weapon. As you can see, we're kind of lacking in wind. Even these, if you only are able to ascend it once, it's worthless. Literally worthless at this point in the game. So, like I have a pistol, I could probably max ascend. I already have a staff. I have a lot of wind staffs, but I already have a max wind staff, so that isn't it. This I've been working on, but one of these is glitched on me, so I can't fully ascend this the way I want to. Uh, Lance... This one I think was glitched as well, this sword for Gale. So, like I said, I have enough materials to ascend it, but it won't let me because it says it's in my party, despite the fact that clearly it isn't. It's not even in one of my other decks. So yeah, that's a weird glitch that's essentially locking me out of my own uh, obtained weapons. Odd. So anyway, let's begin with uh, what we have. Not that though. Not that I actually do need to change that. Where's my... Goodness gracious. And so many of these weapons are crap. You want to hang on to them in case you can ascend them, but then it's like, this is just crap. Cluttering my inventory. Thanks. I hate it. 
Okay, let's go in now. Thankfully, I'm strong enough to do this with pretty much no matter what characters I have for the normal mode, but the rest of the tower is going to be not pretty. I'll cut down everything in my way. I really hope a lot of more of these stories get revisited because they did not touch upon them enough, in my opinion, at all. Garden of Paradise, part one. Weary of fighting, a husband wanders a blighted landscape with his wife at his side. They had been taken prisoner and forced to battle the flowers again and again and again. After endless days of blood and pain, the pair began to harbor doubts about their mission. Now, they continue a new journey with slow, heavy steps. One day, they come across another group of deserting soldiers. They inform the couple they are headed for a land called Paradise. Sorry, my microphone is like pulsing even though I'm not saying anything. Should I move this like away? It's picking up something really loud, but I don't know what that is. They claim paradise is a place where flowers never take root. A place where people will never treat them like criminals, beasts, or worse. A utopia where an idealized life is guaranteed for all. The couple ruminates on this. What if they're right? What if such a place actually exists? After a moment, they decide to join the group. Perhaps they're wrong. And this so-called paradise is nothing but a fleeting dream. Even if it is, it would still be better than all of this aimless wandering. The couple clutches their weapons tight and set off with their newfound allies. This time, their steps are not plodding, but joyous. For they are the first steps on a road to newfound peace. Okay, I'm going to take a really quick break right here. And uh, see what's up with my microphone, sorry. I want to double check the recording and make sure it's not getting like completely ruined here. My neighbor is idling like directly outside my house, so maybe that's what it hears, but it's like um, freaking out all the way into the yellow even when I'm not talking, so I gotta make sure like my microphone's not being odd. Okay, I'm back. My microphone seems to be behaving now. I'm not entirely sure what that episode was about. Um, nothing appeared on the recording, which was odd, even though the, my microphone said that it was picking up way more sound than what it was. Yeah, I, I idle now and I don't see any issue, but apparently there was one. My neighbor's either idling in the driveway, too, or they have their bass, like, turned all the way up and maybe it can hear that, even though it technically can't hear that, because it's at a frequency that's not going to come through on the headphones. I don't know. It's weird, but there's, like, it feels like the ground beneath me is vibrating. <laughs> sucks. I hate them so much. Anyway, let's continue onward. Let's get this done. Oh, 
I'll grind him into dust. Like, I really can't stress enough that it's not a sound. It's, like, a constant vibration. Similar to if there was, like, a bus sitting out right outside your house. I've got enough death for everyone. Even if the room- and you're in a more- oh, I cannot speak. Even if you're in a more inner room and you can't really hear it, you can still, like, feel it, including deep in your ears. Yeah, that's what they have with their subwoofer on all the time. It drives me crazy. They can have their music turned up to a reasonable volume. As in not high at all. But they have their subwoofer set to maximum all the time because they forget to turn it down. And then, like, my whole house just vibrates all day. I shall take care of Because apparently they don't notice it. But for me, it's the equivalent of having a semi-truck directly outside my window at all times. I've got enough death for everyone. That's what I mean when I say I can hear them turn their music on, and you guys won't hear it, but lordy, I do. I shall take care of them. I've got enough death for everyone. More of you come to die? Garden of Paradise, part two. The couple now joined with a band of deserting soldiers, continues along the difficult path to paradise. Along with their newfound allies, they again take up arms against the menace of the flowers. Today, they intend to collapse a building and take out the entire bouquet in a single strike. The husband came up with the idea. And as its owner, he volunteers to risk his life by drawing the flower's attention. While they are distracted, the rest of the group uses the opportunity to bring down the building. The flowers are caught unaware and crushed. The group is filled with almost impossible joy. They praise the husband's cleverness. They applaud his bravery. Their raucous cheers are filled with something very new and strange. Hope. After countless battles, a powerful solidarity forms between the husband and his new companions. The idea of reaching paradise actually seems possible when he is with them. But his wife has been injured in a recent fight. And he is forced to support her as they walk. Again, I don't know the audio glitch, don't know why. Neither of them know when the flowers will next appear. And this concerns them greatly. If only we knew, says the husband. If only we could finally put an end to these days of fear. But even without that knowledge, he continues to press on in the hopes he might finally know a peaceful, happy life with the woman he loves. sometimes too they do just idle their car out there 
or in their garage. And sometimes they do it for like one to three hours at a time for no reason. I shall so yeah, that could be it too. Don't know. But yeah, I feel like they really need to expand on these stories. I feel like they give us way too many mysteries and not enough More conclusions. To die. They're too short. And they don't wrap up enough. They don't really tell us enough about the characters. And considering this game isn't doing too well, either in Japan or the West, it kind of might be a good idea to start giving some reveals sooner rather than later to give people incentive to keep going with their game. Maybe cut down on the grinding and repetitiveness a bit and also add more... A uh, conclusive story. I'll cut down everything in my way. Maybe do it sooner rather than later, because if the game fails before you get a chance to actually make those reveals, then it's too late. More of you come to die. And for good gracious, lower your prices and increase the pity, because as is, uh, it's not worth it. Like I said, this has to be one of the most expensive gacha games for pity I've ever seen. And I'm doing it as a free-to-play, so that's why I'm so far behind. I'll grind them into dust. I do actually need high enough pity and uh, <coughs> repeats in order to actually progress in the game. It's not like Genshin where you can beat the game with starter characters and zero constellations. Mm -mm. These you need max refinement. You don't ascend these characters to 90, you're not going anywhere. The couple continue the search for paradise with the rest of the deserters. One day, they come across a shelter that fits the description. With wary smiles, they approach the shelter doors. But when they draw close, a siren begins to blare. It is quickly joined by a clipped voice over an intercom that utters six heartbreaking words. This shelter can accept only two. Time passes. This agonizing moment lasts for what seems an eternity. Only two? What, do you have a maximum limit on how many people you can take care of? Finally, a member of the group snaps and plunges his dagger into the heart of a companion. He begins to babble and scream as blood spurts across his face. That or it was a test to see how stable they are. Me. I am chosen. I will be first to enter paradise. At his words, the group turns on each other, and a merciless slaughter begins. Voices filled with bloodlust. Voices filled with pain. The alarm continues to rage adding its throaty roar to the symphony of anguish and despair. The husband and wife take weapons in hand and assume battle positions. It is all so they might live together. It is all so they might survive. Some paradise. I'll cut down everything in my way. At that point, I'd rather just create my own shelter. Heck with that.
sanctuary that lets people slaughter themselves on the outside is just gonna slaughter you on the inside too at a moment of inconvenience. Don't expect any thanks. Oh my gosh, the squeaky chair, I hate it. I'll grind him into dust. <coughs> I have no time for this. And I'm gonna need to use some stamina potions. That's another thing, grinding also takes way too long. They give a pretty adequate amount of stamina potions. The problem is the amount of time it takes to have this game running. Like, a lot of times, I end up just, like, watching a Twitch live, live stream in the background while I have this going. Because you don't really play the game. The game plays itself, for the most part. I have no time for this. So the amount of time it takes to just have this running in the background really isn't worth it. Like, have a super fast forward or something. Garden of Paradise, part four. All the couple wanted was freedom. Yet what they found at the end of their long journey was an inescapable hell where friend turned on friend. They are the only survivors. The husband sought to shield his wife during the fray and now bleeds steadily from countless wounds. His wife helps him to his feet, and together they limp toward the sealed shelter doors. Only to hear the same terrible words. This shelter can accept only two. Suddenly, the husband understands everything. He smiles at his bewildered wife. Go on. Live a happy life. Both of you. Means somebody else is already in there. Rather than regret, his voice is filled with the stirrings of hope. Or, second, no. She's pregnant, isn't she? In one swift movement, he picks up his sword and drives it through his own heart. His wife can do nothing but watch as he expires with a smile. Though her heart screams with sadness and loss, she will not allow that to overwhelm her husband's final desperate hope. She turns to face the doors of paradise. The alarm is silent. In that silence, her husband's last words replay in her mind. They will not permit her to give in. Slowly, so slowly, the door opens. She steps inside. Without thinking, she tenderly runs one hand over her stomach. It was all so they might live in peace. All for the life inside her. The one she and her husband would have done absolutely anything to protect. And now, they will continue on. Together. This makes me even more confused about the timeline for these two, though. Alright. 
Garden of Paradise Hard has been unlocked. But what is even in that shelter? Which timeline are we on? Because these people die and then are, like, remade, so... Like, is this a version of them? Is it their final them? It's so confusing! This is another thing that I mean by when I say we need more answers than this. Alright, let's claim our rewards. Also, more gems. Good gracious. Give us more uh, gems. I don't need any skip tickets. Okay, so that is it for the uh, new event. Kind of mixed on it, simply because um, I, I don't know enough about these characters like i said i feel like i need to know more about them but the more they give to this about them they tend to be in like temporary quests so you miss one and you're kind of screwed they need to be part of the main story so i don't know how powerful the main quest is going to be i might attempt one just to see if i can in fact beat it but i may need to quit part way and then like split the parts together i guess i'm not live streaming this so i could give it a go but this is probably the last one I'm going to be able to do for a while if I can, based on force requirements. I suppose we should return to the cage. Because I need to do event quests over and over to get those slabs to make my characters powerful enough. Because that's like the only way left to level up anymore. And the weapon drops are random. You really are so a nice young man, you. Stop it. Okay, I guess they left us off here. Which the elevator is right in the next room, so it's fine. to collect every last one of those fragments. I knew Mama could count on you! Now, come on! So much to do! Hmm, the phone's back. What up? Huh. My phone's been... updated. Stop 10? Uh, deleted user. Have the messages been deleted? Oh no. Hello, are you comfortable in the cage now? Mama's the guide you met, yes. You should follow her. Even though she may seem a little unreliable. Oh, that reminds me. It seems like you've witnessed a couple of pasts thus far. The mage girl, her best friends. And your own, the one where you visit your ailing mother in the hospital. You may be able to use the power from the broken moon if you manage to fix it. But it's up to you to decide whether you believe that or not. I wish I had never been born. Writings found in a ruin. Eventide. Oh my, this is just lovely. Let's take a moment to really breathe in the scenery. I don't know if we have that kind of time, Mama. Let's not. We need to gather Luna fragments. Hey, Bucko. If you talk back to Mama, you're gonna pay. Oh, it's all right, dear. Let's do as he says and hurry on. I absolutely love this version of Mama. What's up? Why did you stop? Oh dear. That tower is very tall. Aren't they all? Please don't tell me you're afraid of heights. And what if she is, pal? 
Mama's just more suited to lower places than most folks, yeah? <sighs> oh, it, it's nothing, really. Especially since it's for my little you. Just don't take on what you can't handle. You're afraid of heights, yet you can fly. You do nothing but fly. It's a dead end. Though, I bet that contraption does something. I bet it does. Let's give it a push. Oh, wait, that's my phone. Uh, I don't know what stop 10 even is. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm not close enough to it. It looked like I was. It's so hard to tell. The screen is tiny. Whoa. I would love to know the law of physics that allows that to happen. Well, with the moon broken, who cares if a floor decides to move around a little? <laughs> like, I really can't stress enough that whatever you're watching this on, if, like, a computer screen is, like, three times the size of what I'm seeing. So if I miss something, I don't want to hear any sass. And here we are at the Dark Scarecrow. Let's get down to it, shall we? Does this thing contain the same past as the last one? The one with all the people who used magic? Enter story, okay. This one is preset, so I don't have to worry about force quite yet. Curse of the Rift, The Mirror's Temptation. Two girls and a boy once met at a school for children with magical talents. Wait, it's actually continuing one? Though they became best friends, trouble arose during an event known as the Day of Pledging. On that day, their star-crossed feelings spiraled out of control and changed their lives forever. The boy perished and one of the girls vanished. Events that seemed to spell the end of the friendship. Near the witch's village, a deep wood lies enshrouded in a thick and heavy mist. What is this thing? Silence hangs on the branches like alien fruit. It is as if the trees themselves are staring at the unexpected visitor in their midst. For at this very moment, the creature, and it, makes its way deeper into the wood. It is nervous, its steps uncomfortable. Finally, the creature arrives at a mirror standing sentinel within the wood. When it sees the image within, reflexively rejects the vision for the creature harbors a deep and all-consuming loathing of its own visage as if attempting to hide the filth it sees the creature drapes a white sheet over its figure but the mirror didn't change what's the point in wearing a thing like that So I'm a mimic you. Oh, the music's different again. You don't have to do this. Okay, it's a female cat. Kind of looks like a cat. It lo looked a little bit like the red panda from uh, Turning Red. In silhouette form. Okay, I'm loving the new music. 
They needed this a long time ago. You're hideous, that much is for certain. The shadow within the mirror calls out to the creature wearing the white cloth. The shadow names the creature before it a rare beast, a thing beyond all comprehension. Don't call me that. A smile slithers across the shadow's face, as though no secret can be hidden from its gaze. You wish to be human, yes? The shadow's tone is thick, the words viscous. They worm their way around the heart of the werebeast, poking and prodding with irresistible cruelty. If you but fulfill my desires, I will make your every wish come true. Finally, the werebeast responds in a voice both quaking and resolute. I will do anything to be human. Anything. Careful what you uh, imply with that anything. So we know it exists in the same universe as the last Scarecrow. I'm curious if it's going to be one of our other friends or not. Oh dear! Looks like it's the past of a beast this time! Yeah. Although it sure looked like the same world as last time to me. Yeah, for me that's a good thing. I really need some of these to actually be connected. Not just random all the time. I need this to be a little bit more coherent. Just, just, just a smidge, please. Like I said before. I restore this past, and I'll get a lunar fragment, right? Just so, you clever boy. All right, let's see what we actually have to do. Uh, force. E500, so this might be a little dicey, because I'm going to want to get up to at least 20, 200, excuse me, K force eventually, but I really don't have enough to do it. We want, oh, god damn it, too. Wind again. Wind is like my worst element. <laughs> I don't have any wind. In the other two wind weapons that are close are glitched. I don't know how to unglitch them. I shall take care of that. See, look at that. Ooh, that's bad damage. That is bad damage compared to what I'm used to doing. More of you come to die? Also, I can't help but notice that A2 recently starts with a debuff. I haven't noticed that before. I need to go back and check. Um, I kind of wonder if they maybe nerfed A2 because she was so good for the longest time that they had to add like a debuff at the start of her because I don't see it attached to any of her weapons or anything or to her character in any actual descriptions. So that beast wore a sheet over itself too. Is that just a thing in this world? <gasps> Who knew I was such a trendsetter? Oh my goodness. Ain't nobody a bigger fashionista than my mumsy. I think we're losing the plot here. Yeah, 
I don't know how to unglitch my weapons. Because then I could start working on some and do way more damage, but... I don't understand why it says they're in my deck when they're not anywhere in my deck. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 86. Okay, it's raising slower than I thought it would, so that's good. It's raising by a thousand. I thought it was gonna raise by five thousand, so I'm looking at it like, <laughs> I still need to be careful, though. I'll cut down everything in my way. Yeah, see, look, A2 starts with a debuff now. I haven't noticed that before, so either that was always a thing and I just never noticed because, again, screen die? tiny, or it's a new thing to maybe curb how good A2 is. Feel the spear. Turn her into, like, a super glass cannon to counteract the fact that she deals just absolutely so much damage compared to everyone else. <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious if this werebeast is like the uh, previous friend. Like maybe something happened to turn her back. Or who's to say that once we reach the top, we go to I wish I could help Mom out more. If only I knew my way around the cage. What I was saying is I wonder if maybe the male friend attacked um, the female friend and she murdered him out of self-defense. And so the main character arrives to the scene, only finds the aftermath. Well, that the sucks. Road is out. So we'll have to use these roots to get over there. Are you insane? I'll slip and fall and crack my head open like a melon. A melon! You float! Don't worry, Mumsy. I'll protect you with my life or die trying. Uh, you float. You'll be fine. Don't look down, don't look down, don't look down! Ooh. My setup slipped <laughs> conveniently during this. Gotta make really sure I don't move it too much. Cause there's a short in this cord. Talk about your close calls. But it looks like it's another dead end. Oh dear, did I mess up the route again? Maybe this thing will help. Maybe you guys should put more effort into actually repairing these towers. Wait, what the? Did we just warp? Uh, uh, just as I thought. <laughs> I knew this was the right way. <sighs> Oh, are there two? There's two moons. Skyscrapers. What's the connection between this place and my world? Oh dear. Is my little you homesick? Miss your mama, huh? I feel you, kid. Ugh. Hold on. I've got a bad feeling about these stairs. Uh... I mean, we could also... 
I don't know, picture moment? Or are these automatic? They might be automatic. Hmm. Got a bad feeling, but there's nowhere else to go. Well, that's gonna suck for coming back down. Oh goodness, that was a close one. Yeah, the photographs must be an automatic thing. Let's pick ourselves up and get back to it. Right. I can't die until I find every last fragment. Okay. Nighttime violence, curse of the rift. The where beast arrives at the city that contains the school of magic. The night is dark, the silence full, yet it is a far different quiet than the still of the wood. The people of the city sleep easily in the protection of their warm homes. And as the werebeast takes in the sight, an indescribable feeling begins to well up inside its chest. Perhaps it is envy. Perhaps it is hate. Can always see myself in glass, huh? You know what you must do, yes? When it gazes into a dusty window, sees the shadow staring back. The where beast does everything that is asked of it, all so it might fulfill its own singular desire. To become human? That is a lot of markers. Pitch a fit, huh? What's that dusty gook you're putting all over everything? Excellent. More. Was this stuff anywhere in the, uh, the murder scene in the last one? I don't recall. I need more. More anger, sadness, hatred. Or was she turned into a werebeast? After the confession, you must give me more. Like maybe the boy turned her into a werebeast? What the hell is this thing? Oh, so I am pretty big. I'm not kitty cat sized. I'll cut down everything in my way. <laughs> my piddly wind More stab did nothing. Die. I saw that 4,000 damage despite. Ugh. 
Oh, that hurts. That hurts my soul. Target the one at the time, please. Like Thank me. you. You can tap them on the left to select them, just FYI. Yeah, uh, ow, A2. They really went ham on A2. Townsfolk's howls of rage shatter the night. A terrified werebeast slips into the dark and makes its way back to the woods. There's also a different narrator, which is nice. Not that I dislike the old one, but it helps to have somebody whose voice actually fits the character. Praises the werebeast's work, but the exhausted werebeast cares not for praise and begs the shadow to finally make it human. You must do one final task for me. The shadow is not finished. Oh no. Instead, it makes one final demand. Before I make you human, you must snuff out the lives of 100 magic users. Are those lunar tears? The mirror looked like it was surrounded by lunar tears. Oh, my feet are asleep so bad. Sitting like this, holding still like this on this uncomfortable ass squeaky chair. So the beast needs to kill a hundred magic users in order to make its wish come true. What a simply horrid proposition! Somehow I doubt it's even true. Well, at least hopefully once I finish this one, the wind was earlier enough. Uh in the level, so I'll have better weapons for later stages. All this warping is making me dizzy. Yeah, cause it got rough there for a second. <laughs> I think Itu got paralyzed or something. I'll cut down everything in my way. Feel the spear. I do have, um, what's his name, the spear user that I could bring back. Argus. If it turns out that Ryan just does not do enough damage to it be worth it. This is why you also want to raise your character's um, mythical slabs somewhat equally if you can. Really, it was right in front of me. So, like, don't put it all into one character at a time because that character can still get wrecked if it gets ganged up on. Yeah. 
Yeah, there she is. There's your other character you could have been. Oh. Was... Maybe we're going up in parallel this time. Damn. This thing's in the way. Like we're in a pocket dimension or something and we're both going up at the same time instead of one up, one down. I'll cut down everything in my way. <laughs> nice try. Another thing, too, is I really need more weapon <laughs> um, leveling materials. I have an absolute crap ton of character ones, more than I know what to do with. But weapon ones, not so much. The thing is, since you're kind of stuck with so many characters, like, there's no point to having this many character materials. But you need an absolute ton of weapon ones, so they need to balance that more, too. There's no one here. <sighs> Come on. It's so tiny on my screen, it's actually hard to tap. Cells. Is the cage a place where criminals get locked up? Oh, we wouldn't be here if that was true, now would we? <sighs> that didn't really answer the question. Someone's here, sis. <gasps> Birds. This is too dangerous. You need to hide. The black birds are talking that's new these are nasty little creatures that invaded the cage we'll never get the luna fragments if we don't dispatch them please just let my little sister go <sighs> no i don't want to hurt the burbs no i don't want to I don't wanna. No! Please. Please just don't hurt my little sister. <laughs> There's no point in living without my sister. I don't want it. I'm sorry. I just... There was no other way. Yes, there was! We could have just gone around them! We literally could have just gone around them. Why do you hate the birds so much? What are the birds? Why can they talk? Why are they sentient? Why do we just kill them and not have a second thought? What are you thinking about, dear? Murder? The birds reminded me of how my sister used to look out for me as a kid. Oh, you have a big sister! Is she adorable like you? I... don't know. How could you do that without just a second thought? Oh, I have a wonderful idea. Quick, give me your phone. Um, all right.
Yuzuki, what is your problem? Hey, what are you doing? Well, I was worried about you, so I decided to give your big sister a call. <sighs> Knock it off. I'm sorry, you. I just wanted to cheer you up. <laughs> Afraid I can't let this slide, kid. <sighs> I was afraid. Make mistakes, yeah. The important thing is putting in the effort to set things right. <sighs> I was afraid the little baby was gonna like reach out a tentacle and slap me, and I was gonna have to make a slap her to cross the cage joke. I uh may have been a little harsh back there. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's really my fault to begin with. Now, let's keep our heads high and fix the last scarecrow. This is only the third. I was going to say. <laughs> oh. But no, how could you just squash that poor bird without a second thought when it's talking to you? And literally, we could have just gone around. Like, they're not that big. Just walk around them. A warped voice. Seriously, I don't like Yuzuki. It's not my fault. It's your fault. Oh, these are the... The lives. They're hats. She's crossing them out. Play with me. Let me hear. Your voice. Again, again, again. Give it to me. The air in the wood hangs strangely ominous. Branches bend, leaves rustle. Critical whispers drift sinister on the breeze. They speak of atrocities, arrogance. But the werebeast pays them no mind as it trundles deeper into the wood. Oh boy. Behind it, a heavy sack leaves a furrow where it drags upon the earth. Inside it is the corpse of a magic user. As the 99th victim falls, the shadow raises its voice in a spasm of utter glee and delight. Animosity and rage seep out from the mirror and coat the werebeast in their violent sheen. I love you. I hate you. Why don't you understand? This isn't my fault. I have to find her. beast awakens from her stupor. A familiar witch stands before her. Kill her. And for the very first time, she begins to fight against the shadow's unthinkable words. It is her, isn't it? Oh, that's new. <laughs> this music gives me Artinelico vibes, I love it.
standing before her is the one she has loved for so, so long. It is you. The girl with the wavy hair. The frantic were beast attempts to string words together, praying they will reach the girl. I will do anything for you. I will be perfect for you. Just please love me. Please. When the voice reaches the girl with the wavy hair, realization grabs her by the throat. Oh God, oh my God, this monster, it's my best friend. Well, that's not gonna go well, getting caught red-handed like that. But what happened? So that beast was actually the girl with the glasses. I kind of have to assume somebody transformed her? Hey, telescope. Conspicuous. What's a telescope doing here? Wait. We used this to look at stars back when I was a kid. We all took turns. And then I'd always try to show off everything I knew about the stars. Oh, what a lovely memory. We should look at the stars ourselves sometime. I'd rather look at Mama than some dumb ball of hot gas. <sighs> yeah, because Yukitsuki as a character, it kind of feels like someone whose depression is so overwhelmed him his grief to the point that he doesn't regard other people's lives let alone his own it's like he's on autopilot i'll grind him into dust I shouldn't have used that. I re didn't realize I was on two or three. I've got enough death for everyone. Oopsie. <laughs> Eighty nine thousand. Never really want to get ten thousand below what you currently are. Even ten K is kind of dicey to me. I'll grind in the dust. They have these like one time a thousand K force missions and they kind of really kick my butt, so. Yeah. 
I've got enough death for everyone. There's still one down there. Didn't see that. He was kind of behind Gale. Hopefully not too much further. Kind of running out of commentary here. The next dark scarecrow should be just ahead. Which means we'll finally get that Luna fragment. Whatever the heck that does for good. If it even does what Mama says it does. Let's see how the beast's past ends. Uh, given how these things usually go, probably an oh. It's okay. It's a predetermined one. Oh, this could be bad. These can be very difficult. Loss's shadow. Which in is spelled incorrectly. The, wood, the girl with the wavy hair stands before her best friend. The once bespectacled girl who has now assumed the form of a beast. She has a question must be asked did you kill our best friend I had to he left me no other choice there was no other way he tried to force me upon hearing the answer the girl hangs her head low even if that's true why I can't forgive you and the enmity of the girl swirl together amongst the quaking trees. Even if I for could forgive you for that one, uh, you kind of killed 99 other people. I can't believe I thought you were my best friend. I can't believe you're defending a guy who hurt me. I, I hate you. No, 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 no. Priet, that's your name. Okay, that wasn't too bad. The bespectacled girl has fully transformed into a creature of pure malice and hate. As her best friend collapses to her knees, she directs a spell at her. 
Seriously? No! This is so hard to do on a tablet! There. My fault. With those words spoken, the girl with the wavy hair plunges her staff into her own chest. beast clings to the weathered and clouded mirror, begging for salvation. But the glass remains silent. The only sounds are the wails of the beast as they echo about the wood. There had never been a shadow. The bespectacled girl despaired over an existence where her wish would never come to pass. So she cast a terrible curse upon herself and sought vengeance against the self-same world that denied her. But when the path of her revenge came to its end, she realized that it led to nothing. Well, there's a plot twist for you. The boy was still terrible, but she cursed herself. Best friends, reunited at last. That's what you took from this? Oh, still. How can people fight if they care so deeply for each other? <sighs> Conflicts can only be avoided if one party decides to endure the pain others inflict on them. That's how it worked in my world, anyway. Oh. Maybe let's save the difficult topics for some other time. Because right now, it's payday! And no, that's not how that works, mister. That's a symptom of your own abuse, but that's not how that works. Alright, Luna Fragment. If I keep going... Alright, time to see our own past, huh? More TVs? These TVs... So next, it'll be mine. What's on them? An eclipse? Facing the past is the responsibility of the one who desires to change it. The secret. The impatient city. library of a metropolitan high school, a boy diligently attends to his studies. When he visits his mother in the hospital, he remains quiet, speaking only when necessary. She is bedridden as a result of her husband's abuse. The boy has devoted his life to becoming a doctor so he might save his beloved mother's life. With the day complete, 
people hurry about their business in the evening gloom of the city. The boy walks alone in the street, surrounded by a noise and light and life that is a far cry from the typical silence of the night. After studying at a cafe, he heads for work. At a very slow pace. Interesting outfit. You're late. Get over here already. The boy makes a perfunctory apology and hangs up before the voice on the other end is finished. Let's get a drink, just the two of us. Seriously though, you are walking like half a mile an hour. As long as you're paying. It's already so late. A familiar loathing for society passes across his features as he jogs down the street. Who's up for some karaoke? Suddenly, he bumps into a group of fellow high school students. That's smart. I think I broke a bone. Oh, quit being a... You're gonna compensate him, yeah? They chatter and squeak like startled insects. Organisms barely worthy of the miracle of life. Deeming the interaction not worth his time, he mutters his second false apology of the evening before hurrying from the scene. Your attitude's not much better, bud. Scared stiff, huh? What a riot. It won't actually let me move. Okay, now it does. He is saving up for medical school in the hopes he might somehow restore his mother to health. He studies until words blur across the page, then works multiple jobs to save tuition money. Fatigue is a constant companion, joy an enemy. His life, his seemingly endless life, is nothing but stress. few days later. The anxious sound of rain. Summoned by his mother's physician, the boy sits quietly in the hospital consultation room. The man opposite slowly begins to speak. Your mother is, well... He informs the boy that his mother has very little time remaining to her. As if attempting to reject reality, the boy begins peppering the doctor with questions. About my mother. How did this happen? What is her condition? The thing is, too, he's putting so much effort into this for his mom, but the thing is... Like, that can't be your only end goal. Your end goal can't be... Sustaining a parent forever who is probably not going to outlive you. You have to find a purpose within yourself. If you want to go to medical school, that's fine. But being a doctor and going into medical research are actually two very different fields. He's really not thinking this through. The doctor explains that his mother's congenital heart condition is worsening by the day. As he delves into the situation in detail, the solution becomes increasingly clear. Is there any way to save her? There must be some treatment. Uh, for something like that, typically you need a transplant if your own heart is not going to hold. We do have machines that we can give you of varying types, depending on the condition itself, to hold out your heart. Usually, in the worst case scenario, for about a year. But uh, in that time, you're going to need to find a, uh, a transplant. But, yeah, I guess I'm going to into my own, <laughs> my own uh, expertise on these. 
There must be some treatment. Isn't there a way to save her? Well, there might be one way. This mother will need a heart transplant. Ah! It is the only thing that might save her. Yet there are many hurdles to overcome, including finding a donor and paying for the procedure. Typically, the procedure is not upfront, though. When this cruel reality is finally laid before him, the boy's thoughts dissolve into mist. Why are our lives like this? It is a question he has asked uncountable times, yet the answer is always the same. It is his father's fault. The man who abused his mother horribly before abandoning them both. And so, this day ends like all the others, with hot rage accumulating in his heart, like so much ash from a fire. And even then, most the of the cardiograph serves as proof that his mother yet lives. The fact that they have her in a state in the hospital like this, normally the devices that we can give you, um, they allow you to be a relatively normal person. You don't have to stay in the hospital. You, can, you can't overexert yourself. You can't run a marathon, but uh, you can get up, walk around, live a daily life. So, it's interesting that they aren't giving her any of these holdover procedures. As she begins to moan softly in her sleep, he reaches out and quietly takes her hand. Why am I so powerless? At this moment, he notices something. His own heart is beating in time with his mother's cardiograph. As realization spreads across his face, he places his free hand over his chest. If it's a heart you need. That's not how this works. We can't take it from a still living human. Also, it's not a guarantee that your heart's compatible. Being related does not mean you are instantly compatible. It's his fault. It's all his fault. Also, there's a bunch of crows outside and they're going absolutely batshit. So, sorry if you can hear that. do anything for my mom and that's kind of a problem my own life would be a cheap price to pay for hers poor you oh things were never easy for you were they but if you fix the broken moon I i'm sure your past will <sighs> well i'm going to work extra hard to make that happen so you can finally forget all these terrible things thanks you're helping more than you think. Hmm? What did you say? N nothing. <laughs> You'd honestly be doing her a bigger favor just by gaining a little more independence there, bud. Do you think your mom even wants that? Now there's three moons. What the hell is going on? <sighs> anyway, yeah, um, normally the procedures that we are capable of giving you, um, even in the worst case scenario, we're still typically able to extend your life for close to a year during the time we actually look for the donor. You don't have to pay it, like, up front. Jesus Christ. Uh, these payment plans exist for a reason, and we typically give you the surgery first. And then have you work it out afterwards. Oh my god, it's not going to be like, oh, you need to give me a million dollars or you'll get to die. Tee hee, evil supervillain laugh. No, good lord, no. Um, it You can't always get 
a donation from a family member. Um, most of the donations we get are from the recently deceased, uh, typically in vehicle accidents. Uh, those are the most common source. Uh, we are working on pigs, which is interesting, growing and harvesting organs from pigs, which is turning out surprisingly well. There's there's a bunch of different techniques that we could use other than just carving out your own freaking heart. But uh, yeah, that's, that's me getting into stuff there. But um, yeah, it, once you're hooked up, you just have this little battery fanny pack you carry around with you. You can't um, be too strenuous, obviously, but you're you're not stuck or confined to a hospital bed. You can move around, live life, go out, enjoy. Um, so I'd, I'd be more concerned rather than becoming a doctor and not becoming one fast enough because yeah, you just can't. I'd be more concerned with finding a better specialist or even a better, better um, hospital rather than what he's doing. But again, he is a teenager, so he is kind of ignorant on all that. But more than anything, the type of setup that the hospital has her hooked up to isn't really efficient and I'm not really vibing with the care that mom is receiving at the moment for this condition. He's mad at his dad, but honestly, what is he really doing aside from cramming his face into a book for a career that he's gonna hate for a woman he can't really save? You're a mess, you. You know that? But anyway, um, let's go back down to the lobby. Maybe how about getting your mom some better treatment by people who already have expertise and then helping maintain a safe and stable life in a... It seems we finally reached the edge of the cage. Oh, I wonder if there's... Oh yeah, the main story thing is closed? Oh, there might not be any more quests to that. Oh dear. <laughs> I, I flubbed. I might need to get back up there. Shoot. Oh, what's this? The tree has borne fruit. That's different. You should definitely pick up everything you find on the floor. That's good advice for life in general, actually. A silver coin? What's a silver coin? When you reach the end of the story, fruit will fall from the tree every eight hours. Accessing the fruit to obtain items, a maximum of three fruits on the ground at a time, so don't let them pile up. Oh, there might have been dialogue at the end of that that I didn't get. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I didn't realize this was as far as the story had gotten. Oops. I wonder if I can go back up. Oh no. I might need to go through all that again. Um... <laughs> The only way back up is this way. Yeah, there there might only be two left. Uh-oh. I go into here and then check out the cage itself. Uh, quest, loadout, enhance, library, map, maybe? Mama's room. Hi. You can revisit any part of the cage that you've already been through by using the map. Thank God. You can even have another go at quests you've already completed for zero stamina and get nice rewards to boot. You might even find some items on the ground along the way. Let's have ourselves a look. Okay, so, uh, the map allows you to revisit portions of the cage that you've already completed. You can attempt battles using zero stamina. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm in. Neat. Play from quest three, part seven. Is that as far as I can go? From point four, quest ten. I don't understand. Point one, quest one. Okay, no, no, no. that as far as I can go in here? Why aren't there more points? Lost items are piling up. There's hidden blackbirds. Pickle blackbirds detected. I don't know what any of that means! Okay, like, okay, statue one, two, three. Hello? One, two, three, four, I think. Point four quest ten. Point two quest four. 
point three quest seven. Okay, so this one I think is the middle one. Okay, we're finally back up to the elevator. Oh my goodness. Let's see if there's any actual dialogue here. on you but just a little was that worth the half hour I spent digging for it no probably not but it sets us on the right path as we can see there is no more quest things so I literally have to wait until there are more main quests because there aren't any at the moment so in the meantime um, I might still record event quests, but since there are no main quests, I can't, uh, record them. So I might end up stringing, uh, two or three side quests together in the meantime. And that also means I get to take a small break from recording this game. Yay! I'm sorry, but I really need to focus on my characters and stuff. In the meantime, keep in mind there is an event going on in summons. There are a couple free daily summons, so I recommend giving them a go. Can we get a wind sword? Overboard, it's free. Get a free three star weapon from this one every time. And fire. You can always sell the ones you don't need. And we get a free one from here as well. I love how it asks that despite the fact it has some of the worst pities. And they're all two tier. Eh, goodbye. Skip, skip. Yep, trash. Trash summon. Sometimes you get uh, three star stuff though. So, anyway, I'm not going to be doing any of that. In the meantime, I will be working on subquests. Namely, this one, but also these additional bosses. Like I said, there is a one-time only one that can be quite difficult, but with enough stamina, hopefully I can uh, get it done and earn some rewards within. This one has event summons, which is just random crap. Again, not great. Um, I'm going to focus on the mythic slabs, which I don't know if I've ever shown you guys. Where is it? Uh, enhance. Mythic slab. So here it is. You level up characters uh, regardless of costume. So any of these enhancements apply to these characters regardless of their existing costume. So if I show you A2s, these are all lit up. It's literally just a sphere grid. So this next one, I need um, 20 medium slabs and 10 big slabs. So she is rank 3. I don't really need to worry about her too much. It's Ryan and Gale that I'm currently working on, I think. Yeah. She's number two, so if I touch this, for example, this requires 30 slabs. If I poke it, I unlock a 150, I believe, bonus boost. So each one of these, like defense, up by 150, every th single one you do, there's HP, defense, and strength. So. This is what you primarily want to focus on for Sun and Moon, for getting your characters up. So that is what I'll be doing in the background. Bit by bit by bit. But I'm going to take a break from recording Nier for a little while. As I said, there's no um, main story. And I'll probably fuse a bunch of future event quests together until the main story unlocks. So for now, this is where I'm going to leave it and focus on a few other games in the meantime, such as Genshin and Undertale and where I'm going to leave off. So thank you so much for everyone who has joined. Um, I'm glad they're finally stringing a little bit more coherent story together. I don't know if it's enough to really save this game, but um, fingers crossed. Because I do want to get this, the story to get better and I do want to find out what happens, but they really... They need to not have it so lengthy. 
and they also need to really alter the rewards in this game because it, it's too infrequent for the amount of time you play and the play the game itself is not good enough to warrant just playing by itself for fun so eh, <laughs> it's kind of a d tier game with a b tier story so i really i want to see where it goes but they need to tweak it so much they're they're tweaking it better there's better story it's more coherent new music but oh you need to tweak the rewards guys it, it it's got to be fixed you can't just string people along with like terrible side quests over and over and over again for virtually no reward for over a year now so yeah there, there's a lot that this game needs to do hopefully it can fix it fingers crossed because i really would like uh the story to continue without the game getting discontinued for a lack of player base, which right now is a major problem, and I can see why. I can't fault uh, people for not continuing, and if that's the case, the story will just be dead in the water, which will suck. So hopefully they can uh, improve that. So going forward, um, please like and like these videos if you want to see more near content. It really helps me determine what games I should be playing, and I hope to see you all in future videos. Bye bye.